Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and we're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the Daily Office Lectionary. Today for Monday, let's take a look at the lesson that's assigned from the book of Ecclesiasticus, one of my favorites, uh, and we're on chapter 34, beginning at verse 18. He that sacrificeth of a thing wrongfully gotten, his offering is ridiculous, and the gifts of unjust men are not accepted. The Most High is not pleased with the offerings of the wicked, neither is he pacified for sin by the multitude of sacrifices. Whoso bringeth an offering of the goods of the poor doeth as one that killeth the son before the father's eyes. The bread of the needy is their life. He that defraudeth him thereof is a man of blood. He that taketh away his neighbor's living slayeth him, and he that defraudeth the laborer of his hire is a bloodshedder. When one buildeth and another pulleth down, what profit have they then but labor? When one prayeth and another curseth, whose voice will the Lord hear? He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? So is it with a man that fasteth for his sins, and goeth again and doeth the same? Who will hear his prayer? Or what doth his humbling profit him? He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough, he that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. He that requireth a good turn offereth fine flour. And he that giveth alms sacrificeth praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. Okay, so I'm going to say something radical here. Uh, one of the reasons why the book of Ecclesiasticus is excluded from the Protestant canon of scriptures compared to the Catholic, Orthodox, and Anglican canons where it's included um, is because of things like that alms are an important part of our life and our spiritual growth, right? Uh, the, the, a lot of stuff going on in the Reformation that had to do with uh, the giving of alms and then what was known as indulgences. Uh, but in the scriptures throughout, uh, but particularly in the book of Ecclesiastes, talks about the benefit to your soul of you giving in support of the work of the Lord and for the care of the poor. That it is actually spiritually beneficial. And there is some fear on the part of some of the reformers that that might be taken to mean that the indulgences that the Roman church was selling would be profitable. So uh, unfortunately, the, the book seems to have been jettisoned. So anyway, but it's important for us to realize that what the author is talking about here is the fact that uh, what is known as amendment of life. When you go to confession and you say to the priest your, your list of sins, or if you're doing it privately, just between you and God, right? You bring up that list of sins and you confess that you're sorry for those sins. But a part of that, especially the sacrament of, of, of confession, uh, reconciliation, is that you also purpose amendment of life. In other words, um, I confess that I've done these sins and I'm sorry for them, that's contrition, but I also intend to not sin again. I, int I purpose amendment of life. In other words, you're asking God for the help to not do it again, right? And, and so Ecclesiasticus deals with that in here. He says, what good is it if you offer the sacrifice for sin and go right back to doing it? Right now, now we do fall into sin. We are, uh, we are fallen, unfortunately. But for us to willfully go and say, "Well, I've offered for, for this sacrifice, so here I am doing this, uh, and I'll just offer again," that sin of presumption is terrible. So when we go to confession, one, we should confess our sins to God, uh, and it can be helpful through the, through the help of a priest who can help hear and assure you of forgiveness and give you uh, some helpful advice on avoiding sin. But we must go to it with the desire to not sin again. And Ecclesiasticus makes that very clear uh, in today's lesson. So today's Monday. We do have 1215 Holy Communion today uh, and 4 o'clock evening prayer. And I do hope that we will see you in church. And may God grant you a Monday that is full of blessings.